My name is John Cushman from the University of Nevada, Reno, and today I'd like to introduce you to a research program entitled Engineering Crassulacean Acid Metabolism, or CAM, to improve the water use efficiency of C3 plants. This research program is a collaboration among research teams at the University of Nevada, Reno, Oak Ridge National Laboratory, University of Tennessee in Knoxville, and the University of Liverpool and Newcastle University in the United Kingdom. CAM has evolved in more than 6% of vascular plant species and is typically associated with plants growing in semi-arid and arid environments, such as the prickly pear cactus shown here. The ability of CAM plants to grow in such arid environments can be explained by their high water use efficiency, which results from shifting net atmospheric CO2 uptake to the nighttime when evaporative water losses are reduced. The CO2 is fixed and stored as C4 acids, which are then decarboxylated and refixed by Rubisco and the Calvin cycle during the subsequent day behind closed stomata. The overall effect of this metabolic sequence of events is that CAM crop species such as Agave tequilana, shown here, have annual water demands that are only 20% of most C3 crops. An important goal of the CAM Biodesign Project is to define the complete genetic parts list of enzymes and regulatory factors needed for CAM in monocot species such as Agave Americana shown here, or Agave Tequilana shown here. In addition to these monocot species, genome and transcriptome sequencing efforts are well underway for a set of core eudicot species, such as Calanchoelaxiflora shown here. The common or crystalline ice plant, Mesembryanthemum crystallinum, shown here, a facultative CAM species in which CAM is induced by water deficit or salinity stress. And the prickly pear cactus, Opuntia ficus indica, shown here, an obligate CAM species. Sequence information from these species allows comparative genomic methods and co-expression network modeling approaches to be used to better understand the temporal dynamics of the biochemical and regulatory processes of CAM, such as those shown here, as well as the temporal control of gene modules that encode enzymes responsible for nighttime CO2 uptake and fixation as well as genes that encode enzymes responsible for daytime decarboxylation and refixation. Minimal sets of genes encoding functional modules for carboxylation, decarboxylation, and stomatal control will then be moved into Arabidopsis and Poplar to accelerate the empirical testing process. The end result of the engineering process would be a minimal set of enzymes and their regulatory proteins, such as those shown here, that are essential for the temporal control of enzyme function over the diel cycle of CAM. To learn more about the CAM Biodesign Project, I invite you to visit our project website at cambiodesign.org. Thank you.